Hi everyone, this is Ling Jie. I'm a researcher from Microsoft. I hope you have enjoyed the part one of recent advances in VLP by my colleague Zhe. In part two of the talk, I will cover more advanced topics on VLP. Specifically, I will cover the right half of this VLP tree, ranging from improved training strategies to multilingual VLP. Here is the agenda of this talk. We will be covering a broad topics today. Hope by the end of this talk, you can get a more complete picture about recent advances in VLP. First, I will start with what Zhe has just briefly covered, advanced training strategies in VLP. Recall that the common practice for VLP is to first pre-train the model on paired image text data with well-designed pre-training tasks. Then adapt the pre-trained model to each downstream task. So how could we improve this training strategy? The first direction is, can we leverage unpaired data that widely exist on the web that are even more than the paired image text data? Pre-training with unpaired data is explored in unsupervised VLP. In this work, the model only takes inputs from one modality at a time during pre-training. For example, given text, the model is trained to predict masked words. Given an image, the model is trained to predict masked regions and detector tags. As the image text data is not paired, we do not have supervision for image text matching at pre-training stage. During fine-tuning, the model will be su fully supervised. The design of unsupervised VLP renders slightly worse performance than fully supervised counterpart. However, there are still room to improve. For example, to leverage the excessive amount of data on the web, much more than the 5.5 million used in this work. The second question is, can we design better pre-training tasks? Following the pioneering works in VLP, for example, UNITER. The commonly used pre-training tasks are masked language modeling, masked region modeling, and image text matching. In Lightning Dot, the authors have proposed a two-stream architecture with a dot product as the multi-model fusion method. This design has enabled real-time image text retrieval and achieved more than 1,000 times speed up compared to excessive cross-attention adopted in UNITED. The secret sauce of Lightning Dot is the use of contrastive learning to learn visual semantic embeddings. On the other hand, another work, CVLP, also introduced a new contrastive learning task for pre-training and achieved better performance on real tasks. Note that contrastive learning task in CVLP focuses on region modeling. CVLP replaced the previously supervised learning, that is object class and attribute predictions, and the regression task, that is region feature regression, with a contrastive learning task on the region features. Then, how about downstream adaptation? Instead of one model for each task, can we have one model for all? To have one model for all, this is known as multitask training. Let's take a look at discriminative VL tasks. For example, VQA, referral expression, and the image text retrieval. This seems to share similar visually grounded language understanding skills. For example, for the given query or question, the model needs to understand the important part of textual query and identify the relevant object in order to make a correct prediction. If independently trained the models for each task, like what we have done in UNITED, we will have 12 models and resulting in 3 billion model parameters. On the other hand, if we train all tasks together, we would only have one model with 270 million parameters. 
which is 12 times fewer in model parameters than the independently trained models. Not only does multitask training save model storage space, it also achieves 1.84 performance improvement on average, which in turn suggests that all these tasks share similar visually grounded language understanding skills. Another question that researchers are interested in is, can we tackle all VO tasks with a single objective? Recall that in Uniter, for different tasks, we design task-specific head and adopt different laws tailored for the task. For example, VQA head is applied on the final CLS embeddings, and the region scoring head is applied on all region embeddings for visual grounding. In this work, the authors propose to unify VO tasks via text generation. Instead of task-specific architectures, the model uses text prefixes to adapt to different tasks. This is an illustration of downstream adaptation for visual grounding task, in addition to text prefixes as task identifiers. An auto-regressive text decoder operates on top of multimodal encoder for answer generation. As visual grounding requires the model to predict region proposals, region IDs are added to the vocabulary. The discriminative visual grounding task is thereby formularized as a generative task with this design. In the next part of the talk, I'll briefly introduce many works on diverse applications of VLP. Recall that pioneering works in VLP are applied to many VL tasks, ranging from VQA to image captioning. What about VL tasks that are not considered here? So the question we are trying to answer in this part of the talk is can we apply VLP for other VL tasks? The answer is yes. On visual dialogue, a multi-turn dialogue-based visual question answering task, pre-trained v-style-bert and v-d-bert are proposed. On visual language navigation, will the model need to predict the actions based on the input textual instructions to navigate through a room? Prevalent is introduced to leverage VOP for vision language navigation. VON will be covered in a series of talks this afternoon. Please join us if you are interested. On novel object captioning, which is specifically designed to test the generalization ability of a captioning model. Its validation and testing splits contain novel objects that do not exist in the training split. Vivo, a VOP model with image tags as the input for textual modality, pushes model performance on this task. On text VQA and text captioning, where the model are required to recognize same text in the image. TAP injects OCR features into VLP and pushes towards VLP model that can read. On OK VQA, where the questions require external knowledge resources to be answered, supplemental knowledge, such as knowledge base, can be incorporated to model pre-training to improve the performance. Even for real-life application, for example, fashion product searching system, where the user input a textual query to search for fashion product, which usually is associated with images for display. Kaleido Bert is a recent work that applies VOP to fashion domain. All thus diverse applications of VOP implies the strong ability and the generalization of vision and language pre-training across different VO tasks and domains. I'll take TAP as an example to show you how we can apply VOP to other VO tasks. The problem we're interested in is syntax to vision language tasks. 
that jointly understand vision, language, and syntax. Currently, there are mainly two defined subtasks along this direction, namely text VQA and text caption. For example, text VQA is similar to VQA. The input to a text VQA system is a question paired with an image, and the output is the answer in the text format. The difference to a conventional VL task is that both the question and image contains OCR-related information. In TAP, the authors propose text-aware pre-training. The input to the system is the embedded question text tokens and the encoded OCR and object regions detected in the image. As shown in this example, other than the question text, additional OCR and object text tokens are input to the network. Mask language modeling is applied on all input text tokens. Other than the visual text alignment that is commonly required in VO tasks, text VQA also poses challenge on understanding the relationship between detective region. To address this problem, the authors propose a new objective designed specifically for text VQA named relative position prediction. The objective aims at getting spatial relation aware region features by letting a pair of region feature predict their relative relationship. To enable large scale pre-training, the authors also leverage off-the-shelf OCR tool to extract OCR features on conceptual caption images. In total, they combine the four datasets for pre-training. In the end, TAP achieves SOTA performance on three VO tasks involving sync text recognition. Now we have covered many applications of VLP to VL tasks. In this part of the talk, we will focus on another important aspect of vision language research, that is, vision and language for vision or for language. The question we are trying to answer is that can VLP help unimodal tasks, pure vision tasks, or language understanding tasks? First, let's look at vision language for vision. VO4L can be a scalable way to learn visual representations. Previous SOTA vision models heavily rely on carefully annotated labels or bounding boxes for learning. Self-supervised learning for vision have been explored. However, the supervision signal from image alone is weak. On the other hand, we can easily find image text pairs on the web, and the text most likely would contain relevant information to the image content. So can we leverage image text data to learn visual representations? The answer is yes. Early attempts are made to leverage human annotated image text pairs in COCO and the visual genome. For example, ICMLM, short for Image Conditioned Masked Language Modeling, is pre-trained on image text data and applied to image classification tasks. Vertex proposed to pre-train the vision model with a sequence-to-sequence -sequence objective and then adapt to object detection task. However, the data scale used in this works are still small, which might be the reason why performance on vision tasks from this works are not impressive. Works along this direction have quickly scaled up to millions or even billions of web crawled image alt text data. OpenAI's clip is portrayed on 400 millions of image text data 
and the over a billion data is later used to pre-train Google's Align. Both Clip and Align are pre-trained in a contrastive learning fashion to learn the semantic alignment between image and the text. Take Clip as an example. Such large-scale pre-training not only enables strong performance on various vision tasks, but also closes the robustness gap by up to 75%. These results suggest that vision language for vision is quite a promising direction to further push performance on vision tasks. What about the other direction? Vision language for language. Like the old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. Vision language also have great potential to enhance language representations. An initial attempt along this direction is vulcanization. In vulcanization, the authors aim to improve language understanding with contextualized visual grounded supervision. Specifically, they design Vulcan classification tasks as an additional pre-training task. Vulcan classification task is to retrieve token-related images, aka Vulcans, for the language input. Then the question is, how can we get the Vulcans? The vulcanization process is to assign each token with a relevant image. During training, the vulcanizer is trained to rank positive image text pairs higher than negative pairs. This mimics image text matching in VLP. During inference, the vulcans are retrieved from an image set according to the relevance to the input token and used as visual supervision for language model pre-training. Compared with BERT, pre-trained without vulcanization, the proposed method achieves 2.7% average improvement, and visualization shows that the model learns to align the semantics of token and image. There is also attempt made to leverage video data for language understanding. This is the best long paper from NACO this year. In this work, the author proposes to use multimodal information presented in videos to, for pre-training and apply it to grammar induction in an unsupervised way. Although VL4L is less explored than VL4V, we can conclude that VLP has the potential to improve performance on unimodal tasks in both computer vision and LP field. Until now, we have covered three topics, training strategies, diverse applications, VL4V or L. The next topic is compressing VLP models. In this part of the talk, we are interested in the efficiency of VLP models. Specifically, we want to know if we can compress a large VLP model while preserving its performance and the transferability? This is an important question, as in real-life applications, large VLP models may not be applicable due to their slow speed and large storage size. First, a quick overview of model compression techniques. There are many model compression techniques, including low-rank approximation, neural architectural search, knowledge distillation, pruning, and quantization. For VLP models, two techniques have been explored, knowledge distillation and pruning. To compress VLP models via distillation, first we need a compact model. Mini VLM is the first work that proposes a more compact VLP model. In Mini VLM, the authors consider a VLP model in an end-to-end -end fashion, which is composed of region feature extractor, an object detection model, 
and a transformer for multimodal fusion. Mini VLM is much more compact on both region feature extractor and transformer. As a result, it reduces over 70% parameters and with 94% improvement on flops. After pre-training, Mini VLM can preserve up to 97% of the performance of a large VLP model, OSCAR. For distillation, usually we use the large VLP model as the teacher and the compact VLP model as the student. Distillation can happen at both pre-training and fine-tuning stage. Where the hidden knowledge learned in the teacher model is distilled to the student model. However, as proposed in Mini VOM, the compact student model differs from the large teacher model, starting at the feature extractor. Therefore, distilled VOM introduces an adaptation step to resolve the input feature differences to the transformer. Specifically, the lightweight detector extracts the region proposal, and these region proposals are injected into the strong detector so that the region features are aligned between teacher and student. The teacher transformer network is adapted with the new input before distillation. In addition, the distillation can perform at three levels, final logics, hidden states, and attention matrix. With distillation, distilled VOM improves over mini VOM, but still more compact and faster than large VOP models. Another direction is to compress VOP models via pruning. For pruning, there are four questions that are important. What to prune, how to prune, how often, and when to prune. A popular direction is the lottery ticket hypothesis. Just a quick recap what lottery ticket hypothesis is. It is from iClear 2019 best paper from MIT. The key idea is that whether we can find a sparse subnetwork in a dense neural network that can match the test performance. This is an emerging subfield in deep learning regarding sparse neural networks. Check out their 300 citations since publication. In this work, the authors aim to answer three questions. First, can we draw VOP winning tickets successfully for VO downstream tasks? Second, can we find tickets that transfer universally to all downstream VO tasks? Third, can we find tickets compatible with adversarial training to enhance the performance? Specifically, the goal is to find a winning ticket that is a sub-network that matches the performance of the original full dense network. At both pre-training and fine-tuning stage, via iterative magnitude pruning. They also study whether the task agnostic ticket finding pre-training can be transferred to downstream fine-tuning, or can the task specific ticket transfer between downstream tasks. The iterative magnitude pruned network is combined with adversarial training proposed in VILA to answer the compatibility question in the previous slide. Here is a brief summary of their findings. At 50% to 70% sparsity across all the tasks, a winning ticket can be found that matches 99% of the full accuracy. The winning ticket can be transferable between pre-training and downstream fine-tuning, and also among downstream tasks. Additionally, the sparse neural network 
can still be enhanced via adversarial training while maintaining its sparsity. Compact VLP models may fit the speed and storage requirement for real-life applications. However, to make them truly useful, the VLP models have to be robust and fair. So we start our investigation with how robust are these pre-trained B plus L models. Current evaluation of pre-trained V plus L models focuses on some standard downstream benchmarks, which usually possess similar data distribution between training and the testing split, with little to none linguistic variations in textual queries, for example, rephrasing or logical transformation of the questions. And lastly, they were built on clean natural images without visual content manipulations. Meanwhile, there are diverse datasets and splits for evaluating model robustness on the popular VQA task. In this work, we take VQA as the focal point of our investigation and compile an ensemblage of nine diverse VQA datasets that cover four general types of model robustness. For example, linguistic variation, logical reasoning, visual content manipulation, and answer distribution shift. Note that here robustness is not adversarial robustness. This table summarizes detailed descriptions of each downstream benchmark, including robustness type, evaluation metric, question type, training data source, and statistics. We hope this compilation serves as a unified yardstick for evaluating VL model robustness and a guidance for future study on robust model design. In addition, Mango is proposed to enhance model robustness of VLP models. It is composed of an adversarial noise generator to learn adversarial perturbations to be added to the inputs. The training of Mango is a minimax game where we minimize the loss for V plus L models while maximize the loss for adversarial noise generator to find harder adversarial perturbations. There are two losses used to train Mango. The first one is VQA task on clean inputs. The second one is adversarial training loss. It is the summation of VQA loss on perturbed inputs and a KL divergence loss between clean inputs and the perturbed inputs. The perturbation are learned via a small neural network, our adversarial noise generator. The parameters of this neural network is universal in discriminating input training examples. Here, we use image modality as an example or to explain how Mango can be trained. Similar procedures can be also applied to the text modality. Another important design is random masking. This is motivated by the significant mismatch in the distribution of question length and image regions between training and testing split of robust VQ benchmarks. Experimental results show that Mango pushes state-of-the-art performance by a large margin on seven out of nine benchmarks. One might ask, what about adversarial robustness that is not studied in Mango? Our recent work collects a high quality adversarial VQA benchmark with human and model in the loop as extension to Mango paper. In this paper, we find that VOP models can be attacked easily by non-expert annotators. To generate adversarial questions, we could directly adopt some of the automatic adversarial attack methods proposed in NLP. For example, Sears here uses back translation for sentence level attacks. 
Text Fuller replaces words with its synonyms, and the Simim plus PSO replaces words with the ones share the same Simim annotations. The latter two are for word level attacks. As we can see that the generated adversarial questions are often incorrect, therefore require additional human annotation to validate their correctness. And they are focused on linguistic transformation, for example, rephrasing and replacing words. And it relies on existing VQA questions to generate the adversarial questions. On the other hand, VQA v2 benchmark is saturating. The SOTA method renaissance is very close to beating human performance. To overcome both the incorrect questions and the saturation of static VQA benchmark, we propose adversarial VQA benchmark, which can be dynamically evolving and collected with human and model in the loop. Specifically, we ask human annotators to directly attack SOTA VQA models. For each question written by the annotators, the model predictions are shown to the annotators in real time. They can try up to five times to fool the model. Then, the adversarial questions are sent to additional human annotators to collect answers and verify the correctness of these questions. The benchmark is collected for three rounds. As the round progresses, stronger models are selected to be attacked. Surprisingly, we find that SOTA VQ models fell within two tries on average. And existing VQ models, including VOP models, such as United and Lekmert, perform poorly on our adversarial VQA benchmark. The gap between model performance on VQA v2 and AVQA can be as large as 54%. Our adversarial VQA benchmark includes diverse question types. For example, questions about counting objects, questions that require model to recognize syntax, different types of reasoning questions, and questions that focus on visual concept recognition. Analysis showed that SOTA VQ models are especially vulnerable at counting relation reasoning and common sense reasoning. Visualization of adversarial questions collected in our adversarial VQ benchmark shows its high quality. And as I mentioned in the beginning, we hope to provide a dynamically evolving benchmark as future models become stronger. After we covered adversarial robustness and introduced our adversarial VQA benchmark, what about fairness? An initial attempt had been made in this work, worst of both words. The authors have found that VOP models are severely biased. For example, the VOP models tend to think women carry purses and men carry briefcases. Like the title suggested, the bias in VLP models may come from the biases that exist in data or models from both NLP and computer vision. In the last part of the talk, I'll cover two works that ex extend current English-only VLP to multilingual VLP. The majority of existing research work on VLP only focus on explore English-based vision and language problems. Taking a step further, how can we perform multilingual multimodal pre-training to learn a unified framework that can handle vision and language tasks in various languages? There are two concurrent works along this direction, M3P and UC2. Specifically, M3P leverages multilingual text data plus paired English image data, and UC2 
augment image tag pairs in English with other languages via off-the-shelf machine translation models. I'll give more details about each of these works in the next few slides. M3P is short for Multitask, Multilingual, Multimodal Pre-Training. The pre-training paradigm is somewhat similar to English-based VLP, but adapted to multilingual inputs. It composes of three data streams, each associated with different pre-training tasks. The first one is monomodal multilingual stream, where the input is multilingual text from Wikipedia. For multimodal monolingual stream, they leverage the conceptual caption dataset. Each in image is paired with English text. And for multimodal code switched stream, the tokens are randomly translated into languages other than English. Note that there could be multiple languages in the translated text. Therefore, there is no image sentence correspondence constrained in a single language that is other than English. A different approach is proposed in UC2. The authors fill in the blank for other languages through machine translation. And two new pre-training objectives are proposed masked region to token modeling and visual translation language modeling. In masked region to token modeling, where the model is required to predict each masked region directly to its associated object label, with the same shared output layer as masked language modeling. In visual translation language modeling, the model jointly learns the alignment between visual context and text in different languages. In addition, a co-masking strategy is applied, where the words that have the same semantic meaning from two languages will be simultaneously masked. With this strategy, the masked token can mainly rely on the image regions to make the prediction, which forces the alignment between image and multiple languages. UC2 has demonstrated obvious advantage over the baselines across different languages, including M3P. Here marks the final part of the talk, in this 40-minute tour for more advanced topics in VLP, we have visited advanced training strategies, diverse applications, VO4V and VO4L, model compression, robustness or fairness of VLP models, and multilingual VLP. These are all promising research directions that is worth even more investigations. There are definitely other challenges and future directions. For example, we observe that there are severe biases in VLP model. How can we improve the fairness of VLP models? For adversarial robustness, we also observe that VLP models can be easily attacked. How can we enhance the adversarial robustness of VLP models. Causality or knowledge could be the potential solutions. And regarding the training efficiency, how can we obtain a training efficiency rather than inference or parameter efficiency? This could be especially useful for pre-training. As the, late, as the data grow larger and larger these days, the pre-training would take more and more computing resources and then longer training times. So 
Um, one possible solution is early bird lotto tickets that have been explored in LP. If you are interested in and working on vision and language research, these are some open questions that you might have an answer in the near future. Thank you for listening to this talk.